pick me. How did you people even find out there was a Paris assignment? The only person I told was Harris. The internet was down and I was bored. We have it on very good authority that Sherry Fisher, the Hollywood madam, is leaving for Paris tonight. And the Inquisitor is going to be seated right across the aisle from her. And by Inquisitor, you mean me. Come on. No, 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 this, uh, this dame is notoriously suspicious, so our best bet is to have two of you pose as friendly, wholesome newlyweds. <laughs> Congratulations, Jake. You too, Nora. Really? And do we get to stay there after we finish filing the story? Standard three days. Listen, Camilla, wouldn't it make more sense to pair me with a photographer? Hey, I don't know what you think I did before I was a writer. I don't like to toot my own horn, but I happen to be a, a Pulitzer Prize, Prize nominated, nominated photographer. photographer. <laughs> well, all right. Apparently, I do like to toot my own horn. Harris, <laughs> tell the adorables what we know. Well, all we have is that Miss Fisher is extremely closed-mouthed, which is ironic, considering her profession. <laughs> but she loosens up considerably when plied with alcohol, the social lubricant. Hey, uh, Harris, um, just out of curiosity, what would a hundred bucks get you with one of Sherry's girls? An angry glare. <laughs> She'd be naked, though, right? Mm. I flew first class all the time, and I never even gave it a thought. But having flown coach the past two years, I have to admit, it is pretty cool to be back. Heated towel? You bet. Refreshing. Listen, would you mind not talking? It's a 12-hour flight where the movie is Leave It to Beaver, and you don't want to talk? We're supposed to be newlyweds, not an old married couple. I'll pretend to listen to you just as soon as we're in the air. You're not afraid of flying, are you, Jake? No. It's just take off some landings I have a problem with. So what, you overcome your fear by reading articles on where to find the best salsa in San Antonio? Well, it doesn't matter what I read. The important thing is that I don't stop until we're safely off the ground. Why? Because God won't let you die mid-sentence? <laughs> If Sherry Fisher act married. Isn't it bad luck to wear an old wedding ring? Yeah, makes the plane crash. <laughs> right, she's coming. Would you put away the damn magazine and look lovingly into my eyes? After we take <laughs> off. You know, I would have no trouble putting a girl like you in a position you would enjoy. That's so flattering. No, I'm serious. You just let me know when you're ready for a job where you're not on your feet all day. <laughs> Say, are, are you reading that magazine? No, not at all, honey. You don't mind, do you? You know, I'd divorce you if the imaginary sex weren't so good. <laughs> so, then my dad says to Bob Hope, he says, well, if Paramount doesn't cough up a little more jingle jangle, our next picture is gonna be called The Road to MGM. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, Bradley. Yes, Dave. <laughs> Hate to interrupt your stroll down someone else's memory lane, but uh, <laughs> could you and I have a, a little chat? Well, Dave, I'm sharing amongst my closest friends here. You can speak freely. Okay. Uh, I'm looking over your expense report, and I can only assume that you're either a criminal or a moron. <laughs> Excuse me. Bradley, please help me understand how a full body massage is a work-related expense. It's for my body, Dave. And I use my body at work. Jeez. Uh -huh. Okay, how about new tires, CD player, cowboy hat? Well, I'm sorry, but I stand by the accuracy of my report. Now, if your little Swedish inquisition is over, I trust my refund check shan't be delayed. Sorry, no refund. But, on the plus side, you got yourself a new cowboy hat. <laughs> 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 
So you started to tell us about some of your uh, customers. <laughs> right. I have one client, Warren, who refuses to pay until he's completely satisfied. <laughs> and let me tell you, it takes a lot to satisfy him. <laughs> really? <laughs> I shouldn't be talking. My husband is always getting on me about what a big mouth I have when I've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Miss, uh, another round here. <laughs> so you're uh, you're married, huh? What, what does your husband think about what you do? He hates it. He wants me to sell my business. How would you go about doing that exactly? Oh, when you're a specialized headhunter like I am, you can always find a bigger company to buy you out. Okay, now. When, when you say headhunter, <laughs> you mean I place qualified professionals in Fortune 500 companies. <laughs> what did you think I meant? <laughs> I don't know, prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're right. You are right. We are all prostitutes. Me, you, your mom. <laughs> This is not Sherry Fisher. What the hell are we gonna do? Cancel the drinks and hope for a tailwind. Wait, don't leave me alone with you. You know what I am? A lonely woman who works too much and never has anyone to really open up to. I want to have kids someday, but when? When will I find the time? <laughs> I love Paris. Even the airport is wonderful. Look, that guy speaks French, and, and she speaks French, and even that little kid over there speaks French. And not one of them is doing it to be pretentious. They're French people, Nora. Everything they do is pretentious. <laughs> Camilla! Yeah, uh, the tip was a bust. Sherry Fisher wasn't on the flight. Yeah, I know. I need you both back here immediately. <laughs> You can't expect us to turn around and get on another 12-hour flight. What? What did she just say? No, give me that. Give me that. Camilla, we just got here. And Sherry Fisher didn't. She hasn't even left L.A. yet, and I want you on her flight when she does. Better idea. W why don't we stay here and let Sh Sherry fly over to us? <laughs> you're on the next flight back, or you're fired. Love you. Well? We've got 10 minutes to spend $400 in petty cash. <laughs> you know, even though we didn't get to see Paris, it's been nice getting to know you a little better. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I, I really feel I've got a new sense of respect and appreciation for... That chicken coach you've been hitting on for the past hour? <laughs> you see, you're getting to know me, too. <laughs> so, anyway, you know, I, uh, I invited her to have dinner with me in first class. I'm not moving. Just for the meal. Now, maybe an after-dinner drink. And if things go well, we'll end up in the laboratory, and you'll have two seats all to yourself. I'd do it for you. <laughs> yeah, you're getting to know me real well. <laughs> Give me an hour, and I'll give you the rest of my petty cash. And? And my James Elroy novel. And? And top billing of a story. All right. Guess I'm just a hopeless romantic at heart. <laughs> Have fun in the crapper. Oh, <clears throat> Dave. Hi. Good morning. You know, uh, yesterday, I forgot to give you a little something that might clear up any confusion over my expense report. Here you go. Wow. Tickets to John Tesh. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're all yours, my friend. Rock on. <laughs> nice try. <sighs> Look, Dave, I I'm sorry. This, this bribe is really just a cry for help. See, I have a problem with paperwork. Um, my mother was a hippie, and uh, I missed most of third grade because I had to go to aromatic candle-making workshops. You attended Franklin Elementary, your mother was a Republican, and you were a civil medalist in the Math Olympics. Yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I I'm kind of like an absent-minded genius. I, I, I can't be bothered with trivial things like expense reports. It's, it's like Albert Einstein. He couldn't comb his own hair. Yeah, well, the big difference between you and Einstein is... I can't believe I even started that sentence. 
<laughs> now, Bradley. Dave's just doing his job. Thank you, Harris. Uh, by the way, I uh, noticed a couple of discrepancies on your expense report. We need to talk. <laughs> All right, Dave. <laughs> He must be destroyed. serving back there. Baby vomit. Really? We got Coco Hunt. Look, this is nothing personal. It's just that... Oh, no, no, she only speaks French or Greek or something. <laughs> well, figure out a way to explain to her that this is my seat and I want it back. I figure sure just did. <laughs> you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I thought we had a deal. Deal's off. Well, fine, then I want my book back. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Fine. What is all this stuff? Well, it ain't Coco Vin. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're close to landing. 47 down. Camera company, 10 letters. Begins with an H. Oh, God, this isn't another one of your superstitions, is it? Why don't you just read an article? Okay. Reading an article is for taking off. <laughs> Finishing a crossword puzzle is for landing. Do you know it or not? Yes, but I'm not going to tell you because I want to see what happens if you don't finish it before we land. Okay, okay, I'll tell you what'll happen. When they sift through the wreckage, they'll find an unfinished crossword puzzle and me with my charred hands around your neck. Now tell me that they match it. I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna. Go! Hustle one! Hustle one! I'm not sure that fits. Just make it fit! Just make it fit! It's Camilla. Wonderful news. The madam is leaving LAX in 45 minutes. Your plane touches down in 10. And just so there's no slip-ups this time, she's wearing a tan trench coat. Hey, you, your trip to Paris is back on, Lucky. No, no. I, I don't want to go back to Paris. I, I've just earned enough frequent flyer mileage in the last day to get a free trip to Paris. And as I believe I just said, I don't want to go to Paris. <laughs> You'll thank me when you're dining on Duck Liver Confit and a little cafe in the Boule Miche. What she means is reasonably priced bread and cheese from a stand next to the bus depot. <laughs> hey, I remember you. You were on this flight yesterday. <sighs> I was promised if I did three back-to-back -back flights, I'd get a little plastic plin like the pilot wears. <laughs> uh, I mean, plastic pin. Yeah. Are you drunk? I wish. <laughs> I'm just really, really tired. Oh, uh, here, let me get that for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jake. So, you going to Paris? Well, I hope so, or I'm on the wrong flight. <laughs> Nora. Yeah, okay. No comments on the shirt. It's either this or the life's a beach tank top. Oh, honey, you look good in anything, huh? Mwah. This is my wife, Nora. Now, this is Sherry. She's sitting across from us. Oh, hi. How did you know my name? I... Uh, well, I got it off the luggage tag. I don't have a luggage tag. Oh, you you really should. Because can, can you imagine if there were two bags exactly alike and then you grab the wrong one? I'm talking about a traveler's nightmare. The whole thing would just... Nice going, slick. Come on, I'm getting off. 
Excuse me, I'm jet lagged and I'm a little punchy. Change of plans. We're actually not going to Paris. I'm sorry. We pulled away from the gate. Please take your seats. Well, just let's pull back to the gate. <laughs> I'm sorry. Once we pulled away, we can only return for a medical emergency. Okay, I, I have sinusitis. Yeah. And <laughs> malaria. And I'm seven months pregnant. I thought you were on your honeymoon. Hey, don't judge me. <laughs> Do I need to call the captain? I said I was sorry. Can't you cut me a little slack here? Why? You haven't cut me any slack from the moment I met you. Well, guess what? You blew it. You made the rookie mistake, not me. Rookie? Me? And what's at the top of your resume? Oh, that's right. You're Camilla's friend. Okay. Maybe my background happens to be more in photography than it is in reporting. Oh, good. Here I, it comes. Yep, you bet here it comes. I was nominated for a Pulitzer. <laughs> I don't mean to lord that over you, but no, you know what? Wait, yes, I do. You're really proud of that. Yeah, what if I am? And you're really gonna make me say it, aren't you? Say what? A Pulitzer nomination means nothing. What are you talking about? Anyone can be nominated for a Pulitzer, Nora. All you have to do is fill out a form. Well, that shows you what you know, because I never filled out a form. Well, someone must have. I mean, your ex-husband was the publisher, wasn't he? He probably had someone do it and then told you like it was a big surprise. Listen up. Nora. I didn't realize you'd take it like this. Look, getting a Pulitzer is no big deal. Yeah, how would you know? Because I won one when I was at the New York Times. Oh, you won one when you were at the New York Times? <laughs> oh, good. Now I feel so much better. <laughs> and then they took it away from me. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You're, you're that guy? The one, the one that made up that story about the 10-year-old drug dealer? And I didn't make up the story. Yes, you did. Everything I wrote was true. You made it up. I just couldn't get the people to go on record. You made it so up. So I took some creative license. You made it up. I made parts up, okay? <laughs> I still won the Pulitzer. Yeah, but it should have been for fiction. <laughs> well, that, that must have been tough. Yeah, and to top it all off, <laughs> the week after they took away the prize, my wife left me. Apparently, she had a little problem being married to a national joke. Look, I didn't know. I, I didn't mean to say that you were a bad reporter. You're not, you know. Neither are you. You know, I never said anything, but I really liked your tribute to Versace. Yeah? Yeah. And who knows? One day I might even nominate you for a Pulitzer. You mean a has-been can nominate an also-ran? It's that worthless. <laughs> oh, I finally closed my eyes for the first time in 42 hours. <laughs> that feels so good. <laughs> Say, what kind of shampoo is that? Suave. Sorry, I can't help it. <laughs> Not you, you jerk. That's the name of the shampoo. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think it's the kind my wife used to wear. It's nice. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be landing in about 15 minutes. There you are, Dave. I'm ready to go over my expense report. Not now, Harris. You wouldn't believe the morning I'm having. In the last hour, I found out I'm being audited. My credit cards have been canceled, and my college diploma has been revoked. Somehow, I'm three credits short of my degree. 
So you don't have time to go over my expense report, Dave? Are you kidding? Do you know how long it's going to take me to straighten all this out? Oh, I have an inkling. <laughs> and if I have to take Spanish again... <laughs> you are so lucky. Oh, Dave's the lucky one. He was this close to being booked on Oprah as a pre-op transsexual. <laughs> Want us back tonight? No. No way. No. Darling, you can't expect to get a paid vacation if there's no story. But there's stories that we could get here in Paris. Uh, oh, look. There, there goes Gerard Depardieu, French kissing Juliet Binoche. America doesn't care. Do we have to get on another plane? Not if we get caught smuggling drugs, we don't. Do you have any drugs? No, I don't. You're not reading your magazine. I'm too busy praying I see a gremlin jumping up and down on the wing. Four trips halfway around the world and we're coming back empty-handed. What a waste of time. You'd think we would have stumbled on some kind of a story. What do you mean there are no more seats in first class? Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? John Tess. John Tess! T E S H! What are you looking at, lady? What are you Give me that stuff? What are you doing? What are you doing? Mileage? And what are you doing? Get the fat chick out of there! What are you first class? I am a first class passenger! Over here. Give me those wings! They're 